Hello everyone, so if you have been following the previous videos, by now you should have a measurement model ready, which has been confirmed using confirmatory factor analysis. So now the next step is to check common method bias in your measurement model. So common method bias simply means that the measurement of the factors of the constructs was biased due to the fact that you used let's say any particular way of collecting data for instance most of the time when we do survey studies what we do is we collect the data using five point likert scale so all the items of all the factors has been collected has been measured using five point Likert scale or second or seven point Likert scale. So just because we use the same measurement scale to measure all the factors and their respective items, it may happen that the respondents adopted a pattern of responding to, to the same way of collecting data, same measurement scale. And maybe they were not really reflecting on the constructs or factors itself but they were just reflecting to the one way of measurement okay so if there are any bias due to use of one particular way of collecting data that's what we look in the common method bias check so there are some remedies so i recommend all of you to read this paper by potsakov at all so the method yeah you can see the title of the paper here right so i recommend all of you to download and have a look on this paper so this paper suggests explains the common method bias in detail and then suggests quite some remedies to common method bias so, some of them can be adapted in the pre-survey so the design of your survey some approaches is that you know having the exogenous variables and endogenous variable in two different pages of the survey not in the same page and there could be also like using two different scales so you measure the uh, you measure the exogenous variable maybe on a seven point Likert scale and the exogenous variable maybe on a 10 point Likert scale so this kind of approaches could be taken you can put maybe pictures in between different uh, in between different section of the surveys if you put pictures you should put pictures which are relevant for your survey and the pictures can di distract the respondents from responding in the same pattern right so they have a look in the picture then they go back to the next questions again so some of those pre-server remedies can be taken sometimes you know maybe you have not done any pre-server remedies then you can use these statistical measures here i listed three there are many approaches but we will follow three most of the papers follows the first one as i told you uh, but if we can do the other two normally what we do is when the first one doesn't work then we go for the second one if the second one still doesn't work then we go for the third one actually that's that's the way of doing it so most of the times you will see first one works why works well if your study design is good first one will work well but some reviewers or some co-authors will still tell you that you have to do all three of them so you do that okay and we can read detail about these things in this paper but now the first one is having a single factor okay it's you are telling that if all my items in your study maybe you have 60 items and 12 constructs right 60 items may be representing 12 constructs but you are saying instead of representing 12 construct all 60 items represents only one construct right and when would that be possible that all the 60 item is very well reflected by one construct when they are not measuring different things but measuring the same thing right all the 60 items measures one thing only and that could be a method bias what it what it is measuring is the method bias because the the survey design was so like same for all the questions that People, instead of responding to the questions, they were just adopting a pattern of responding to the structure of the survey, which comes with the method. And yesterday, we talked about some of the ways, how can we deal with it, right? Mm -hmm. So, 
in this approach, it's very easy. We use the explore, exploratory factor analysis framework. And what we do, we force it to give us only one factor. Okay? And the variance explained by the factor should be less than 0 0.50, right? Yeah. So it should explain less than 50% of variance. So let's see how to do that. So this is the approach one. Okay? So before we create the framework, we just, uh, yeah, for explored effect analysis, we just create another subset of the factors that we will be using, okay? So here, we have defined it. You have to update your uh, subset. But just to tell you one thing, you know, you see we have created many subsets, right? But actually, you create the subset only once, the first time, and then you just copy this part in all of them. Because you will have the same subset for all the analysis, right? So you just upgrade the first time and then copy and upgrade it in all the places you have subset. That's how you can navigate in this script, okay? Only the very first time when you run uh, the, when you run the multivariate normality, you know, this one. So you will see this part and all the other parts are exactly the same. So you just copy this up to this point, okay? Up, up, up to this point. You will just press Ctrl 3 and you will put it, you will put it here, okay? Ctrl V. So that's how you will update the script for your data, okay? You are, so why we are creating a subset is that in our data file, we have many variables. All of them are not part of my study at the moment. When I collect the data, I collect the data about, let's say, 100 variables. Mm -hmm. But my study, I'm using how many? About like 30, something like, I think it's 28 or 27, something like that. So if I just give use the whole data, then it will consider the whole data set for exploit effect analysis. You know, but I don't want the expert effect analysis on my 100 observation. That's not part of this study. I have collected those data because I will write another study using some other variables, right? So that's why we are creating a subset of the variables which are interest for this study. And also we have the variables like gender and uh, education. Those are not necessary. Those, if you include that in expert effect analysis, it will mess up because their measurement levels are different, you know, they are categorical and all those things. So that's why we just define it and we click run. And here you see it is exactly the same command we used earlier in explore Factor Analysis. But here we, ha we, we, we just updated the data file name. It is same as this one, okay? It has to be always the same. And we say that give us one factor. We force to give us one factor. And here it is a assumption that there is no rotation. So we have to tell this and this is for maximum likelihood estimation. And then we just run it. And then we want to see detail of the factor. So we just click summary. We could use, we could see more information using the summary command, but we are not using that. We are just giving the, just give us the output for single factor. So here, what do you look at? So ML1 is actually our factor, okay? And these are our factor loadings, okay? But what we look at is here, portion variance explained. The portion of variance explained should be less than 0 0.5, and that is true here. one factor exactly all the items of the study to be one factor and they if they make up a good factor then it's a bad thing they should make up a bad factor a, a good factor will have higher than 0 0.5 average variance extracted what is these things ss loading it is the squared sum of all these loadings what is normally the squared sum of all this, uh, of all the loadings? What do we call it? In other words, we call it eigenvalue. If you divide this number 
by number of items how many items we have here 27 I think if you divide it by 27 you will get this value average variance extracted is yeah when you divide the squared factor loadings some some of the squared factor loadings by the number of items we get this value so that's that's the first approach and it is easy 